You know I love a school bus as much as the next guy. But the problem is, they're a little light on headroom. And if you're like me, over six feet tall, and have ambitions of putting nice quantities of insulation in the floor and ceiling, that headroom's just gonna disappear like that. There's only one way to deal with this, and that's a roof raise. So in the next coming videos, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I'm gonna be doing a roof raise on my bus using all the tips and tricks we've learned over the last seven years here at Chrome Yellow doing roof raises on school buses. Every bus is a little different, but I'm hoping that by giving you the broad strokes and some useful things to look out for, you'll have success in your own project. The first thing when talking about a roof raise in a school bus is how much. How much is it gonna cost? How much are we gonna raise the roof? And how much time is it gonna take? So let's talk about those, shall we? What I can tell you about how much it's gonna cost is a lot. <laughs> the sad truth is materials prices have never been higher. The cost of steel has almost tripled in the last couple of years. On a full size, bus, we're talking, you know, 35 to 40 feet, you can expect to spend about $3,000 in materials to do it right. And that is uh, going to include hat channels. And those are the extensions that you weld in between the windows that actually raise the roof. I like to get mine from schoolie.com, even though I can make them myself. Luke and his team over there have a high quality product that's great for do it yourselfers that will be a perfect match for the existing profiles of the hat channels you have. And it also includes weldable inserts on the inside so you can have a really solid weld. You're looking at anywhere from about three to $600 for those depending on the length of your bus. After that, we're talking dimensional steel. So your one by one, one by two tube, angle iron, stuff like that. That's gonna vary pretty widely depending on what you decide to do with your bus, but I would expect to spend another $300 or so on that steel. After that, we've got the skins. And by skins, I'm talking about the sheet metal that runs down the sides. We like to use a product called galvanized steel. And galvanized steel in 18 gauge is our, uh, it's our weapon of choice when it comes time to skin in a school bus. Those sheets are available in lots of different sizes, but you can expect to spend around $100 to $120 per sheet of that for your build. So if you can imagine you know, on a full size bus that's 40 feet long, you might have as many as, you know, five or six sheets per side. So we're talking 10 to 15 sheets. That adds up pretty fast. The last thing is going to be rivets. And again, big variables here, but expect to spend a few hundred dollars on quality rivets. After that, you've got primer, um, paint if you wish, and sealant and you know plan on another couple hundred dollars for that and you can see how this really adds up quickly especially if you want to go ahead and block the emergency roof hatches or patch your flasher lights or get rid of those back windows in the door there and let's not forget the fact that we're going to have to cut and extend the wiring harness too so it really adds up um, so expect to spend a fair bit just on the materials the great question is how high should you go you know it's the same amount of work to cut and raise a bus, you know, one inch as it is to cut and raise a bus 20 inches. A lot of people get into uh, this temptation to, you know, raise it as high as they can. And I understand that desire. Um, on my first bus, I raised mine 20 inches. Um, one thing I'm going to say though is it's really not necessary to go that high. And there are trade-offs that come with doing a really high roof raise that in my opinion mean it's not so clear cut. And a lot of times I would recommend going with a smaller roof raise. Um, and this is something that a lot of other builders will back up on this. In general, the longer the bus, the longer the wheelbase, the more stable it is, and the more it's going to handle a taller roof raise with ease. So if you've got a 40 foot rear engine pusher and you wanna go up 20 inches, that's gonna be a lot more stable ride in crosswinds and passing semis than trying to do a 20 inch raise on a short bus. Um, that would also just look weird. In general, I don't recommend raising a bus any more than 16 inches, um, regardless of the length. And that's 
a number that I've come to, uh, you know, after years of doing this, where you get all the benefits of the roof raise and you really mitigate the consequences of going too high. On my own bus, I'll be going 12 inches and that's because it's a shorter bus and really I'm not looking to build something that is super tall with bunk beds. You know, I just want headroom. I want to be able to insulate it really well and I want to be able to have upper cabinets and a high enough shower head that I can live comfortably in that space. Another important thing to consider is if you're raising the roof too high, you can run into problems finding sheet material that's going to be wide enough or tall enough to actually fit in the opening you made. Boy, they're making noise back there. And of course, one really important question is how long is this all going to take? Um, I can tell you that at my shop, doing a 16 inch roof raise on a full size school bus and doing all of the things that uh, you would do since you're in there, um, like extending the wiring harness, deleting the flashers, patching the roof hatches, you know, addressing the rear windows and door. Um, we're looking at between 160 and 200 man hours. That also includes the exterior demo, which is a big project in itself. Um, that's in a shop with all the tools. I would say, you know, if, if you're a handy worker and you can work hard, um, you could probably do it in about the same time, as long as you don't get stuck spending too much time scratching your head trying to figure out what to do. That's the whole point of this video. I'll hopefully be saving you some of that time. Um, but it's a big endeavor. I've never met anyone who's regretted doing it. And that is an interesting point, um, you know, to bear in mind. It's like roof raises and insulation. I've never met someone who's regretted it. I've only met people who have regretted not doing it. Take that for what it's worth. Well, without further ado, I want to go ahead and get cracking on my own roof raise. And so that's going to start with the exterior demo where we will be removing rivets, taking out the windows, taking out the strips between the windows and popping the screws on the rub rail so that we can get ready to start making our cuts and lift that roof up 12 inches. So come on inside and let's get working. and we got one one whole side has all the exterior screws removed and I've got all the interior windows out and I'm um, gonna go ahead and pull the screws on this side here and uh, I might go ahead and pull these ceiling panels down um, you know my good friend Alyssa was kind enough when she was at our shop to <laughs> go through and remove all these screws thank you Alyssa um, so I actually had to put a few screws back up just to hold them up temporarily while I move the bus around. So I think I'm going to pop those screws down too, drop these ceiling panels, get the insulation out of here. And uh, my goal is by the end of the day, have all the windows out, 
all the ceiling panels down, all the exterior panels off, and uh, if I'm really getting after it, I'll be able, I should hopefully get these side view mirrors on the front off, and then it's actually a line of rivets across the front and the back of the bus. That's gonna be a little more elbow grease, but uh, if I could have all the demo work done today, or at least the majority of it, I'd be feeling really good. <laughs> I wanted to take a minute and talk about the insulation that you see behind me and above me in this bus. And this isn't, you know, to cast judgment upon people who haven't done it this way, but I wanted to share my insights about insulation and why I do things the way I do things in a bus conversion. The first thing is, you know, a lot of people are like, well, it's already got insulation. Why would you remove that? And why would you, you know, spend all the time and energy to tear down the metal and tear out the insulation only to have to re-insulate it and put up a new type of ceiling. I understand that argument, but that is an argument that is usually only made by somebody who's never actually torn down the ceiling of a bus or the walls of a bus and seen how disgusting it is inside. I don't know if you can tell, there's like all this dark colored area back there. That's all dirt. <laughs> and you know, if the roof has leaks, there's a good chance there could be mold or some other disgusting things growing in there so take that ceiling down the first time and you'll even if your bus is from a, a place where it I mean this bus is from New Mexico right so it doesn't rain much down there it's still filled with dust and um, it's still disgusting so that's like reason number one the next thing is when you remove the ceiling and the insulation it gives you the opportunity to replace this insulation with something that's much higher performing in, in my conversions we really like to use closed cell polyurethane spray foam it has an R value of depending on what you look at, somewhere between six and a half and seven per inch of thickness. Whereas um, this fiberglass here, it's got an R value of almost exactly half that. It's about an R value of three and a half or so. So by making that switch, you really gain a whole lot of R value. Additionally, we'll be framing down, you know, about another inch and a half off of the strapping here. So that'll give us a wall cavity of about three, three and a half inches to fill with spray foam, which means we'll end up with, you know, around R20 or so in the walls compared to what we have now, which is gonna be about R4. So that's a big difference. The other thing with insulation that I really believe in making it a priority is that it's something that's always working for you. You know, you can install a diesel heater and that's great, but it's only heating when it's on. You can install an air conditioner and that's great, but it's only cooling when it's on and using resources and costing you money. Insulation is expensive, but it only stings once. And once you have an insulated bus, it's literally always working to your advantage. And something I've noticed, the, fir the first bus I ever did was spray foam. It basically knocked 
the temperatures, the highs down by 10 degrees and the lows up by 10 degrees. And that's without any kind of heater or anything installed in it. You can imagine what effect that has. It's like getting heat, free heat in the winter and free AC in the summer. Much more in favor of being more efficient and using less than overbuilding and using more. Um, and, you know, not to be political, but I think that that's a good strategy for a lot of things in this world. So yeah, I'm gonna be tearing out this fiberglass, this nasty ass fiberglass insulation, which I hate to throw it away, but that's where it's going, and replacing it with um, closed cell spray foam insulation. There are lots of other insulation alternatives out there. I'm not generally a fan of them in this application because the wall cavities are not deep and you really need to have something that maximizes that space. Uh, having a vapor barrier preventing condensation from getting to the steel skin of the bus is super critical. And so something like wool or um, you know denim or anything like that to me is just, it's not gonna deliver the performance that I'm looking for. The added bonus of spray foam too is that once it cures, closed cell spray foam is incredibly rigid and it really changes the structure of the bus. It adds a lot of structure. Um, not like it needs it, but it is kind of cool because it locks all of the wood strapping and framing that we're gonna be adding into place. You know, it's my little soapbox time about insulation, why it's important and why I think if you're gonna do a bus conversion to live in full time, you owe it to yourself to do the insulation. And it's one thing that you, there's no redos on insulation. Once you build the bus out, it's built out. And whatever insulation you did or didn't put in there is or isn't in there. So, but hey, you do you, it's your bus. With the interior fully gutted and all of the screwed panels on the outside gone, the last thing to do, my least favorite, the part I've been avoiding, is to pop this rivet line right across, if you see it, right across the front there of the windshield so that that front cap can go up when we get the jacks on it. So um, I'll be using my impact driver to pop off the side view mirrors and then uh, one of my favorite tools, air chisel to pop those rivets off and looks like I'm going to also have to remove the uh, windshield wiper motors. It's not really a big deal. And um, I'll do the same thing on the back and then this thing's ready for cuts, which is very exciting. There we go. <laughs> making a cut to a rib up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these rivets and also these rivets so I can peel the skin back and get my saw in there and make the cut without cutting through the skin. the front cap. I'll uh, take you around and show you what I've been up to and give you a closer shot. Got all those rivets removed across the top. I also did this zone. And then uh, went up there. Basically I'm gonna have to peel back the sheet steel for the skin of the bus. 
uh, so I can cut the underlying ribs. But then all the way across this side, pulled all those rivets out because we're basically just going to separate that front cap and lift it straight up above the windshield. And that's where we're going to be putting in our new uh, skin across the front. And then just the same idea on this side, all those rivets there and then there and down that window pillar. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be leaving the original driver window and uh, just because I'm, I'm partial to them. I like the way they open. But uh, come on down the side here and uh, we'll get started doing basically the same thing all the way across here. See that line of rivets? We'll be popping all those because this is where we'll be cutting the back and lifting the back up right across that door, the top of it. So, all right, let's get this knocked out and we'll call it a day. up all the fun and um, yeah the, to get ready for the roof raise then what do we got to do well I'm gonna go ahead and pull the entry door I might not have to do that but since I'm replacing it, I'm just gonna get rid of it anyway and uh, oh all the wires that go up and run the lights around the bus uh, we're gonna have to splice in 12 inches on there so I'll go ahead and do that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and clean up those wires and get rid of all of the extra circuits that aren't going to be used. We call that a detox. I'll probably do a separate video just on that because uh, a lot of folks get hung up on that. But um, there it is. We are fully demoed and um, I am ready to get this roof raise going. I don't know about you. Um, it was actually pretty easy so far. Uh, this bus is not putting up much of a fight and for that I'm very grateful. But uh, before we get started, I thought it would be a really interesting thing uh, to do for myself and probably for people out there, but um, I wanna take this to a scale and get this bad boy weighed so that we can know where we're starting from. Um, I'm not concerned at all about going over the weight rating of this bus, which is, I have to check, I think it's around 25,000 pounds. Um, but I am curious how much weight we're gonna to add to it. I know usually we add around four to 6,000 pounds in a conversion, and uh, I think I'll be right around there on this. I'm actually going to be trying to make this bus kind of as heavy as I can in the back because it's not an air ride bus, and these leaf springs are designed to carry weight, and they ride quite harsh uh, until there's a bunch of weight on them. And in my experience, you know, a few thousand pounds actually for fuel economy in this vehicle going down the highway, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, the biggest thing you're fighting is wind resistance. And um, well, this thing is shaped like a brick no matter <laughs> how you slice it. So uh, why don't you come along with me and we'll go see how much this thing weighs. And um, if you got any guesses, go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, my guess I think is gonna be I'm going to say, I want to say 13, I'm going to say 13,000. Feels light, but why not? Okay. Let's hit the road. What are the odds that, that camera stays there, huh? All right. Okay. Here we go.
This place is funny. The guy that runs it is a real character. He's always blasting the talk radio and the, you know, I think he's been at this for a while. How you doing? It's not important to you how I'm doing, okay? You got it? I got it. You are <laughs> You're like, oh man, this guy's in a bad mood. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen your face. You had me. I probably was like a deer in headlights. That's right. What can we do for you? Why do you want it? What's it for? Uh, this is just for fun. I just I uh, had my own curiosity how much this thing weighs fully gutted. So. What are you going to do with it? Uh, I'm converting this into a camper. Get it in as a camper. Yeah. You gotta bring it back. And get I know. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Hate to say it. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't know. I don't know how much of that you heard, but that guy is a freaking hoot. So, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up and get out of here. Okay. So, the verdict is in. Any guesses on the, uh, the weight of this guy? So, I don't know if you can see it, but 13,740 pounds. Pretty good, pretty good. I think I was close on that. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but this bus has a weight rating, so what it can handle, 25,000, 500 pounds, it's super, it's that second line down there. It's really faded, it's right, right there. So that means I can basically almost double, <laughs> double the weight of the bus, which not gonna come anywhere near that. I think we're probably gonna end up adding between four and 5,000 pounds back onto it. Um, but uh, that's pretty awesome, I was just, I was too curious, so thought I'd take it in and weigh it. All right, well that wraps up two really easy days of demo, honestly. And uh, I'm very excited to uh, get going on the actual raise portion. Um, so thanks for watching me work uh, at an incredibly fast rate in those time lapses. And uh, stick around for the next video where we cut this thing and jack it up.